Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And today I'm in on one photo raw with the most recent update, which came out about two weeks ago. They made a massive overhaul to the curves tool, which is, uh, is incredible. Uh, it's fantastic. And I absolutely love it because they just made it easy. Um, which is saying something because honestly, curves is probably the tool that gives people the most, uh, scaries. I don't know what the word is, but it definitely uh, had that impact on me years ago when I first started photo editing. I was always afraid of curves. It just seemed like some weird thing and things move around and I didn't know what it was doing. It wasn't like a slider. You don't just drag a slider and hey look the photo does whatever. It seemed complicated and frankly it kind of was complicated until you start to use it and really learn it and understand it. Well on one just really made it easy which I think is incredible for us as editors, especially if you're newer to some of this, because it can take that kind of intimidation factor out of a really powerful and incredible tool and uh, give you the power to understand it and the ability to manipulate it and get great results, kind of like that. So we're gonna dive into the Curves tool today. Let's get going. I've got a photo here that I've done nothing to except for a crop and a, a massive fix on the distortion. Uh, it was a stunning sunset. Um, but I've done nothing to it. I did nothing in develop. I'm just going to go straight to Curves because I want to show you how powerful it really is. Now, Curves is really based around doing two things for you. The first one is manipulating the tones. That would be highlights, shadows, basically creating contrast, adjusting light, if you will. And the second thing is color. And we're going to cover both of those. So click on Add Filter and go in and add Curves. Now, it's uh, like I said, it's updated. It's got a lot of new features, and I'll cover some of those. I did do a kind of a preview of what's uh, new in that video, which was my first look at this mid-year update from On One. Check that out if you haven't yet, but today we're going to dive in a little bit more depth, and I'm going to edit this photo. So if you're new to Curves, it's this line here, and there's really four sections. There's this section called All. I'm going to call it a tab. Uh, this tab that says All, and then there's a red, a green, and a blue tab, and those are for the different color channels. Like I said a moment ago, you can adjust tones and colors. Now, there's um, this line uh, which represents the, uh, this is the tone curve. When, when people say tone curve, they're generally talking about this tab that says all. This is the one that manipulate light in, whereas red, green, and blue manipulate those colors respectively. Now, the bottom left corner, this little dot here, this is the really, really darkest parts of the photo, the deep blacks, if you will. And this dot up here in the upper right corner is the brightest parts. That would be like the whites. And then you've got a corresponding, you know, versions of gray in between. So uh, if you start here at the very bottom, that's the deepest, darkest blacks. If you go to here, that'd be more like shadows. The point here in the center would be kind of like midtones. The point here would be kind of like highlights. And then you get up into the whites in the very top right corner. And you will notice as I clicked each time, I dropped a, uh, another one of these little dots, what I call a point or an anchor point on the line. Now that's powerful because what it does is you can take these anchor points and you can, uh, you can move them up and down the line if you want to. But more importantly, you can move them kind of like that or that. And you will see what's happening because remember, I'm kind of in the highlight, kind of the brighter parts of the photo here. So if I go like that, I'm creating even more brightness there. And so this is how you control contrast and the light distribution in your image. Consequently, uh, down here, like in the shadow area, I could take this and pull this down a little bit. And what's happening is those kind of shadow areas that are a little bit darker, they're getting even more dark because guess what's visible here in the background? A histogram, but also it's a, it's a gradient. And so now it's brighter in this upper left corner and it's dark and, uh, or darker down in this bottom right corner. And so when you drag it towards the area that's dark, whatever you're dragging, whatever tone value is gonna get darker. So when I pulled this down, it got darker. Now, if you ever want to reset one of these, you can just right click and remove control point and it puts it back. You can, you can do that on any of these. You can also click on one and right click and you can reset all channels if you want. Uh, I don't want to. In fact, I'm going to go back and I'm going to add this control point back here and pull that back down. And what I've basically done is created a little bit more contrast in the image. Again, I'm in all. And so this is all about the tones or the tone values. And that's why I think people call it the tone curve. If you take a look at the photo before, there it is, you know, Gorgeous color, beautiful scene. This was Italy, uh, but really lacking contrast. It's a raw file. They always do. You, you really need to add contrast, I think, to most raw files. But uh, just a couple of minutes, 
with you know basically three little points, only two of which I moved, and I've got a better looking photo. Something I like to point out is when you adjust contrast, colors get impacted too. So keep that in mind. And that's one reason I always adjust light before I do any color work in a photo, because adjusting the light and uh, adjusting the contrast will impact how the color looks too. Uh, again, note here the colors before and after, definitely richer and more intense. And that's because it's higher contrast. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so we've done this and I've created what kind of looks a little bit like an S shape. And so what you'll probably hear people talk about when they talk about the tone curve is an S curve. That's really what they're talking about. It's kind of shaped like an S and all it does is you kind of brighten some of the uh, stuff that's a little bit brighter. You darken the stuff on the bottom left here that's a little bit darker and you just create a higher contrast image using an S curve. So that's what that is. Now I'm also going to reset that and I want to show you something which is they have styles built in. So styles, kind of like a preset. The default one is unedited, but there's one in here. And by the way, you can unhover. That's a color negative. So it's going to look weird. Invert is going to look weird as well. But there's different things like light and midtones. But this contrast boost, I can click on that. And hey, guess what it did? It built basically an S-curve. Now, these points are in slightly different areas, but again, you can change them. You can move them around. You can slide them up and down if you think that, oh, you know, it was something about like that. But maybe you think, well, you know what I really want is this stuff over here that's pretty dark. I want that to get really dark. Well, maybe that's not here. Maybe that's more like down here. And so you can pull and you can see that that area is getting darker because what I've done is I've gotten closer and closer to this bottom left corner which is your absolute blacks. And then I've pulled it down further toward the dark area to make it darker. So that's a way you can enhance certain areas in the photo. And then if you like this, you could come in here and say, hey, save new style, and you can name it and it'll be there available for you. I'm not gonna save it, but I wanted to show you that. And I'm gonna reset again because I wanna show you another way. And this is where they've made it so easy. And that is in the past, I was always like, you know, I kinda of wanna adjust these tones here, and I kinda of wanna adjust those tones, and maybe those tones, you know, randomly, I'm just kinda of picking some areas. And what I would always do is say, well, that's kinda of light, but it's not totally light. That's probably, you know, maybe that's, maybe that's here. And let me go adjust that, and you know, it, it's kinda of on point, you know, you can kinda of figure it out visually. But again, I'm going to reset, but they've made it so much easier because now you've got this dropper. So all you do is you highlight the dropper and you come over here and you just click it once. And guess where it put it? It put it over here. I was kind of off, to be honest. And so it's actually come in and it said, hey, this area and that tone is actually it's more closer to a mid-tone. I had it up here where it was kind of closer to the highlights. And so this little tool allows you to come in. I'm going to do it again. There you go. I've just dropped something there. And you have to click it each time to activate it. I'm going to click one there. You can see all the points are now showing up on my line. I want to get maybe some of these. And I'm going to get maybe also a little bit of these brighter tones just to have something up there. Well, that's a little too bright of an area. Maybe I'll try something a little bit less, maybe about like that. There we go. So you can see as I click, I'm actually getting it, uh, or it's actually automatically dropping an anchor point on the curve tool or there on the tone curve for me. So basically gone are the days of kind of guessing if you're selecting the right tone by dropping a point here. You can just use this eyedropper find the shade or the tone that you want to adjust. And as you click it, it will drop that onto the uh, tone curve line for you. So then you can come in and make the adjustments that you want to make. Hey, I want these to be a little bit brighter. I want some of these to be a little bit darker, that sort of thing. So you can just come in and then adjust accordingly. And again, a little bit of an S curve, but don't forget you have the ability to come in and adjust these in terms of where they're positioned. So maybe it didn't get exactly what you want in terms of how it looks and you want to darken some of those areas slide those down or up if you want to get to brighter areas and then pull the uh, the little point with your mouse down to darken it or up to brighten it now another thing to think about is when you're adjusting something like the midtones for example you might come in here and just drop a point and let's say i want to brighten the midtones a little bit you can do that but you'll notice that what happens is this entire line kind of starts bowing up which means it's pulling up everything else with it well you can use additional points to kind of anchor things in place so you could drop a point there and a point there and then come in and grab your midtones. And now when you lift your midtones, 
you've really isolated those midtones because these other two points here are acting like anchors and holding the rest of the line in place. So the entire line isn't bowing up. It's just this little section here. So that's a way, if you're finding it hard to isolate a particular area, drop a couple of points around it and then lift or you know uh, drop that area in order to adjust those tones without impacting a broader range of tones across the image. Now here's another thing that's cool is with this eyedropper, I can come in here and I can click once and if I hold my mouse down, you can see on the tone curve line, it's dropped a anchor point or a point there on the line, but I haven't let go of my mouse yet and you will notice that my mouse head, if you will, the mouse itself is a double headed arrow. And what that does is you can just start dragging now and as I drag up, it's lifting that area and as I drag down, it's darkening that area. So you can drop those points with the eyedropper and then if you don't let go of your mouse, you can start sliding up and down and adjust accordingly. So it's an easy way to just come in and make the adjustments within those points without even having to go over to the line itself and drag the points around. Okay, and one other thing to be aware of that they've done now is they've, they've got this in and out. And so I just dropped with the eyedropper a little point there. I can come in here and highlight this. And now with my arrow key on my keyboard, I can take that up or down, right? So uh, the in is actually going to go left or right as I uh, move my arrow key, right? So I'm now dropping the number. So it's you can see the number is going down and therefore... It's moving a little bit left, so it's getting a little bit brighter, but I could also come over here to out and one click, it highlights the number. And with my arrow key, if I start going up, the number's increasing and it's moving up the axis, which is getting brighter, or I can just uh, click it uh, repeatedly down or just hold it and let it drop down. And that's gonna create more contrast because it's moving it down. But you can use the arrow key now with the in or out. The in again is gonna take the little point left or right, whereas the out is going to take it up or down. Just another way to really kind of fine tune your adjustment. So maybe you feel like you have it just about right, but maybe it's just tiny a bit that you need, need to do. And if you try to grab that point and drag it, it can be hard to be incredibly accurate. But using these in and out boxes and your arrow key, you can do it basically one increment at a time, which gives you these nice little minute kind of detailed uh, bit of control over the movement of that point on your line. Okay, so now I want to show you the color channels. I'm going to go ahead and just add this contrast boost. I think that looks pretty nice. There it is before, there it is after. And what I want to do is talk about the red and the green and the blue channels. Now the red, you can see this is color coded as well. So the line is red and then there's red and then the other side is cyan. And that was one of the things that's been added is this color coding, not just the line, but also the background. And it's incredibly useful because um, so many times I would think, and, and even using this tool a lot of times, I'm like, what's the upset of red? I always think red and blue, but it's cyan. And they've done the same color coding over here. Green and magenta are opposites, and then blue and yellow are opposites. And so again, with the color coding, you can look at it and say, okay, well, if I'm going toward the red, I'm going to get more red. But if I'm going away from the red, I'm going to get more cyan. And so looking at this, I'm just going to uh, grab the midtones. And if I pull this, the midtones because there's a lot in the image so you'll be able to see that really well if i pull this down towards the uh, cyan you'll see that everything is getting really greenish blue that cyan color but what i really want to do is add a little bit of fire to that sky because it was a beautiful sunset and i want to amp it up a little bit and there we go i've just done that and so this red and cyan gives you great control and again you can come and drop multiple points maybe you just want to do a little bit more red in the highlights and not as much in the midtones and maybe you don't want any of the shadows or you want to pull it back a little bit. And you can come in here and just do all sorts of things to take control over the colors in your image. And that's why Curves is so powerful because it does this for all the major color channels, the red cyan, the green magenta, and the blue yellow. So you can create really whatever kind of color look you want. And if you decide you don't like it, of course, you have the right click option to remove a control point. But you can also reset channel. So that's that individual channel, which is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to clear that red channel because now I want to go over to green and show you the same thing. So again, green and magenta are opposites, and this visual color coding is super fantastic and helpful. And in this case, I personally, I'm a fan of having some magenta in my sunsets. I just like it. Uh, and so I might come in here and just say, I'm just going to do it across the entire photo, add a little bit of that oomph to the photo uh, color-wise, and there you go. I mean, honestly, it was just a tiny, tiny bit, but the color impact is massive. There it is before. 
and there it is after. Now that also includes what I did on this uh, on the tone curve itself, impacting the uh, the contrast boost style. But for as far as color goes, you can see that the color's been impacted pretty dramatically. But again. Maybe I just want to get rid of that point, or actually maybe I want to leave it there, but I want to put it back in the center. And maybe I just want to get a little bit of magenta in some of the highlight areas. And so I can come in and do something like that. And that doesn't really look that good. So let's say I'm going to reset that. I'm going to reset the channel, and I'm just going to go back to adding a little bit of magenta across the whole thing. And while I'm at it, maybe a tiny bit of red across the whole thing, or maybe a little bit of cyan. Get those colors to play off of each other is kind of fun. Uh, and if you like color, then experimenting with all the different uh, options here in the Curves tool is a great way to really get familiar with color. Tiny bit of red there. I've got a tiny bit of magenta over here. And then blue, same idea, right? The opposite of blue is yellow. And so, again, if you drag the line toward the upper left, that's toward the blue area. And conversely, if you drag it to the bottom right, that's toward the... The yellow area, I don't want yellow in my sunset, which seems a little perhaps counterintuitive, but I don't like that look. I actually like the blue here better. And one thing I like to think about with um, color is that I want to play off those complementary colors. There's a nice complement here of cool tones and warm tones. And so I went towards warmer, which is like the magenta here on the green tab. And then on the red tab, I went a little bit toward the red. So on the blue, I'm actually going a little bit toward the blue. Now, I don't want to do too much because even though I like that, it's a little bit much, but I want to come in here and just add a little bit of blue to play off of those warm and cool colors, which I think looks nice. Now, let me show you how this photo started because we've come a really long way. There it is before, and there it is now. And there's one other thing I wanted to talk about, and that is this opacity slider. Maybe you get there and you're like, I really like it, but I'm having trouble tweaking it to get it exactly where I want it. And I like that, but it's a little too much. We can come in with the opacity slider and just dial it back a little bit to reduce the intensity. Now that reduces the intensity of everything you've done. It doesn't isolate individual channels, for example, but at 65%, I think that's where, yeah, 66, that looks pretty good, right? At 100, maybe you're like, that's eh, a little too much, Jim, but that opacity slider, maybe even I'll just take it down to 80 or so. That looks really nice. And I've done nothing except use curves. And so that's why I'm talking about in this video, the power and the control that you have really over not just light, but also color. You, you can just do so, so much with curves. And thanks to the fine folks at On One, now it's super incredibly easy and it's a lot more visual with the histogram and the grid and the color coding. And then, you know, having the eyedropper to isolate specific tonal values and adjust those. Honestly, it's just become incredibly useful and I think more people will be taking advantage of it because it really does have a lot of power. It's almost like they gave us some training wheels for lack of a better word to help us get more deep and more familiar with this tool and I, I applaud them for it. Honestly, I'll take all the help I can get when I'm editing because it makes uh, perhaps something that you would consider hard much easier and it's so powerful that I think it's really useful to be using the tool but with the complexity and perhaps the confusion that this tool can create in people and to be clear that's not an on one thing. Curves is in lots of things, Lightroom, Photoshop, and all that. It's just confusing, I think, to a lot of people. But on one's done an incredible job here, just making it easy for us. And as I showed you here, you can honestly take a, a photo that had, you know, obviously a beautiful scene, but beautiful light and beautiful clouds and beautiful color, but it's kind of flat. And, you know, as raw files tend to be. And in a couple of minutes, honestly, I just did a few minor adjustments. I've got a really powerful and colorful looking image that was a snap to make using probably the hardest tool in a photo, in any photo editor, really. And that's just because Curves is so much more easy to use now. And that's my uh, my quick look. Well, that's not really a very quick look, I guess, really. But that's a bit of a deep dive, perhaps, into how the Curves filter works here in On One. Hope that you found this useful, my friends. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with more videos. You guys take care of yourselves. And until next time, adios.